Hello and welcome to lesson 11 in this tutorial series looking at how to learn about programming using Scratch. In the lessons so far we've learned a number of the main basic skills in programming from variables uh, and also selection. In this lesson and the next couple of lessons we're going to be looking at something which saves programmers a huge amount of time and effort and that's something called loops. The technical word for that is called iteration, but it basically means where you're repeating blocks of code rather than having to write it out over and over again. And there are a couple of different types of loop that we can use. The one we're going to be looking at today is the definite loop. And a definite loop is simply where we know definitely how many times that will repeat. Let's have a look at a little example in Scratch itself. So I've got a new uh, Scratch website set up here. Um, let's just change the, uh, the sprite just to make it a little bit more interesting. Let's go for a dinosaur this time. I'll get rid of the cat. And the dinosaur needs a background, of course. Let's go for the Jurassic one. There we go. So we have our dinosaur all set up for this particular uh, demonstration. And what I'm going to do is grab the green flag block so that we start the program by pressing the green flag. And then I'm going to go to control. Now control is where we have our loop blocks where we can repeat code. And you can see the word repeat is listed there. So I'm going to grab this repeat block and snap it just underneath. And the number 10 here says how many times we want to repeat these instructions. So in this case, we're repeating something 10 times. And anything that we put inside this block will be repeated that many, uh, that many times. Let's make the dinosaur walk. So we're going to move him onto the left-hand side of the screen there. And we're going to go to Motion and grab Move 10 Steps. Now, if we're repeating that over and over again, it's going to simply do 100 steps in one go. So what I'm also going to go uh, to is events, uh, sorry, control, and I'm going to grab the weight block there um, just so that he moves 10 steps and then waits a second because he's a big dinosaur and he weighs a lot and it's going to take effort to move. So what we've got here in this repeat block then are two instructions. One, move 10 steps forwards and then wait one second. And when I run this program, it's going to do that um, 10 times. Let's go full screen so we can see this. So there he is on the left hand side looking quite happy. Although apparently his eyeball seems to have fallen off for some reason. We'll overlook that. Uh, we'll click the green flag. And you can see he moves, takes a pause, moves, takes a pause. And we can see that each time he moves forwards uh, 10 steps, he's taking that pause and he does that 10 times. So there we are. I think he's finished now. So he's moved um, 100 steps in those 10 blocks. So we can have anything we like uh, repeating in here. Uh, so we could uh, do motion, we could say turn 15 degrees and wait a second. Uh, this obviously would be a bit weird, but it just shows that we can put anything we like into a repeat block and have that uh, repeated that number of times. So now he's going to repeat 10 times, turning around, doing some sort of uh, weird front flip, um, and uh, he will probably end up upside down here, which is not really the right way for a, a dinosaur to stand. There we are. Anyway, so uh, you can see that the um, Repeat block allows us to repeat anything we want a definite number of times. So this will always happen 10 times. Let's just uh, reset him back so he's upright, uh, which is actually 90 degrees. There we are, so 90 degrees. There we are, he's back into the right position. Let's get rid of that rotation block because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Put the move in there and the wait one second. And this time what we're going to do is repeat this 15 times so that he will, in fact, let's move it 20 times because I think that'll probably get him from one side of the screen to the other. Let's drag him to the left-hand side, go full screen and run the program. So again, those two instructions, move 10 steps 
and wait for one second are now being repeated 20 times, so he will now move all the way, pretty much all the way across the screen. So being able to repeat code is a massive time saver when it comes to programming, because often there will be occasions when you will have to repeat something over and over again. For example, if you're trying to count up how many words there are in a document, then you're going to have to repeatedly go through every single character looking for all the spaces, counting them up, because the spaces will then tell you how many separate words there are. Uh, there are all sorts of examples. Computer games are often going to be a case of repeating things, repeatedly checking to see what keys the user is pressing, for example, uh, so that you can move the character around the world. Now, we've in previous lessons looked at quite a number of uh, number-based programs, so we're going to do uh, a number-based program today which will get the dinosaur, very cleverly, to recite a times table. But not just a times table we decide, we're going to ask the user uh, to choose what times table they would like the dinosaur to repeat, and then we're going to use a definite loop, the repeat block, to go through the whole times table from 1 times something to 12 times something. So in this case we'll be repeating something 12 times. That's our traditional times table then. So let's just move that repeat block out of the way for the moment and start by asking the user what times table they would like to use. So we're going to go to get, uh, sensing and grab the ask block and just say in there um, which times table shall I do? There we go. Now, of course, the result of that will go into the answer box just underneath this one here, but we want to store this because we're going to need to know and remember what the times table is so that as we go through the times table, we can keep the same number all the way through. So we'll go to variables and we'll make a new variable and we'll call this table. So it'll be the two times table or the three times table and so forth. Let's now set that table variable to whatever the answer is that the user has given us. There we go. So we have the times table then. Um, now we'll also need a second variable because when we are going through the uh, table, we need to keep track of a couple of different numbers. One is, of course, what table is it we're reciting, two times, three times, four times whatever, but we also need to keep track of which position we're up to in that table, one times, two times, three times, all the way up to 12 times. Now in some programming languages, in fact in pretty much every written text-based programming language, uh, this is a counter which will be a part of your instruction to repeat something. In Scratch, that's done separately, so we'll need a separate variable to keep track of how many times we have repeated this instruction. Let's just call this a counter. So we'll go to make a variable, and we'll make a variable called counter. And to begin with, we're going to set this counter to 1. No point having it as a 0, we don't start with 0 times. Uh, that's the fairly easy one. 0 times table is fantastic. Uh, so set counter to 1. At that point, we know what the table is, we know which position we're up to, so we can start our repeat block. Let me just zoom out slightly so we can see all this code. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is to um, carry out the first multiplication. So we're going to have to have the counter, which is 1, times by whatever the table is. And we'll store the result of that in an answer variable, which we can then output. And we are going to be referring back to one of the earlier tutorials we did on concatenation. Now, if you've gone through this whole series of uh, videos, uh, either on my YouTube channel, The Tech Train, or on the website, computerscience.click, um, then hopefully you'll remember the earlier lesson on what concatenation is. If you can remember it, fantastic. Uh, the answer is that concatenation is joining together of strings or variables to build up, say, a sentence. So rather than just giving the answer of two, four, six, eight, and so forth, uh, we will have the dinosaur say the whole line. So one times two is two, 
2 times 2 is 4, and so forth. So we'll store the answer in a variable called answer. So I'm going to call that answer, not to be confused with the built-in answer block, which just simply temporarily stores whatever the user has typed in. Uh, so what we'll need to do is set that answer to something. Now I'm just going to untick these variables here because we don't need them to be displayed in our game area. There we are. So what the answer is going to be is the counter, so one and then two and then three, times by the table. So we need a times operator. So we'll go to the operators section and find the times symbol, pop that in there. And this is simply going to be two variables multiplied together, the counter, drop it in there, and the table. There we go, like that. So we can now put our concatenation in there. Let's go to looks for this one and do the say. Um, we'll have this uh, saying it for two seconds. Let's do two seconds for the moment. It's a little bit slow. We, we can play with that later on. Now, we're going to have to have quite a lot in this hello box. So a tip that I gave uh, you in a previous um, tutorial was how you can add a comment and then build up here or just write out the sentence that you want it to say or an example of it. And then we can break that up into the strings, the text or words or symbols and the variables which will contain the information that we're wanting to um, include. So here I'm going to say uh, for let's say the two times table one times two is two. So that's simply going to be the sentence. It doesn't look very complicated, and it's not really, but that's going to be made up of several things. This first bit, the one, that's the counter, because it's going to be a one, and then a two, and then a three, and so forth. So we're going to have to have the counter to begin with. Then we want to have this times symbol. So that's just simply going to be some text. So I'm going to go to operators and find the join block there, put the counter on the left, and then have a space and the letter X for a time symbol here, and then a space again, because of course we have a space either side of that time symbol. Now the next part in this sentence here is, oops, is the two. Now the two is always going to be a two if it's the two times table, because this is the table. So if we're doing the three times table, this will always be a three. Five times table, this will always be the five. But of course, we don't know which table the user will choose. So for this next bit, we need the variable table. Let's grab that out there. Now, of course, there's no extra space in this join block to put that in there. So let's go to operators, grab another join block, put everything from the first one in the left, and then add the next thing we want to join, which is table. So we now have the counter, one times, and the table, two. And then we need the word is. So again, we need to join another thing here. Let's put everything we've got so far into the left block, uh, box there, and then change that to the word is, not forgetting to put a space either side of the word is. And now finally, of course, the last part of this is the answer. So we need to add the variable answer to the end of this. Let's grab another join block, put that there. Everything that we've got so far goes in the left hand slot. And at the right hand side, we need the answer. So we'll drag and drop that into the right hand side. There we are, that's all done. We'll just uh, close up that comment. And then this of course is what we are saying. So not the word hello, but all of this. Let's grab and drop that in there and zoom out slightly. In fact, I'll make my preview of the game a bit smaller so we have a bit more room. There we go. Um, so once we've outputted the answer for the first line, of course, we are repeating everything 12 times, but we're not repeating the same answer because at the moment, counter is one, table is, let's say, two. So we're going to constantly say one times two is two, one times two is two, one times two is two, one, and so forth 12 times. And that's not really right. Because each time we repeat these instructions, we're going to have to make our counter go up by one. So the first time we repeat it, counter is one. The second time we repeat it, counter is now two, and then it's three, and so forth. So the 12th time that we repeat it, counter will be 12. 
So let's now set the counter variable. Let's grab that, drop that in there. So we're going to set the counter variable to whatever it is now, plus one. So we're just going to grab the plus operator, put it in here and say it is the counter variable plus one. There we go. So that's our times table program. And you can see that we are gonna be doing this exactly 12 times. So all of these three instructions will be repeated 12 times. Every single time this program works, it'll always repeat it that number of times. Let's have a preview. Let's go in and have a look at our dinosaur. There he is with his wonky eye. Uh, we're gonna run this. It'll ask me what times table shall I do? Let's be kind and do the two times table. So I type a two in there. And then we can see one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, and so forth. So he's now reciting the whole of that two times table to us. And you can see that the concatenation is using the counter on the left, in the middle is the table, and on the right is the answer. So those three variables. And we're repeating it 12 times. So when we get to 12 times two is 24, and then the program ends. And if we want to, we can of course run that with a different table but it will always repeat 12 times. If you want to repeat that a different number of times, so you want to repeat the times table up to 20 times, then you can simply change the number in this loop here. So remember that the two different loops, one of the loops, we know definitely how many times it will repeat. And that is a definite iteration or definite loop and we can always decide how many times we're gonna repeat this code. In the next lesson, we're gonna look at the other type of loop where we don't know how many times it's going to repeat, and that can be a little bit more tricky to work out. So have a little practice with this one. What I suggest you do is go to Scratch now, try to build your own times table game. So play around with that and see if you can build it up. You don't need to do all the concatenation to begin with. You can keep it simple if you want to to start with and just simply have the answer. But see if you can do that simple calculation with those three variables and then repeating it 12 times. Then try repeating it 20 times or five times. And you can also do the little experiment where you can move the character along. Or you could even have your little character move 10 steps every time he says the answer. So you can combine those two together. But have a play with it first of all before moving on to the next lesson. But when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.